Welcome to 908 ENT, the podcast. I'm your host, Sal Liberato. We're here to help you take another step towards success. Now let's get ready to learn the basics from the best. What's going on, everyone? Thank you for tuning back in. Today, our guest is John Lasardi. John, thank you for coming on today. Thank you for having us. You got it. John is a partner at the Liberty Group. They have been in business for 103 years. They have evolved over the years now, offering moving, storage, building maintenance, shredding solutions, kind of everything all in one. You know, this is all public info. Anybody can Google the business, Google you. What would you really like our listeners to know about you? Well, obviously, I appreciate the opportunity of being on your podcast, which is great. I know we've been trying to do this for quite some time. Um, yeah, I think you kind of summarize our, our services pretty well. You know, we're, we're our family owned and operated business out of Berkeley Heights, New Jersey, uh, 103 years in business. Uh, so three generations uh, servicing our clients here in New Jersey. Um, and again, just, just a nice opportunity to, you know, have some nice open dialogue today with you. Yeah, that's awesome. So just to start the show off, I like to ask everybody, what are the three simplest things that lead to success? Yeah, when I saw that question and, you know, I think something kind of hit me pretty quickly, but I, you know, I think being passionate, I think we talk about that a lot at Liberty the culture at Liberty, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, being self-motivated, I think is something everyone needs to work on because that's not always consistent. I think, you know, I think people think that everyone's motivated every day of the week, but I think that's not, um, you know, reality but you like to find people that are self-motivated. Um, I think that's a big part of success. Um, and I think lastly is the ability to fail. Uh, I think, you know, seeing what people do after they fail is a great characteristic. Um, so I think those are three big qualities, passionate, being self-motivated and having the ability to fail. Yeah, definitely. I feel like a lot of people do talk about failure. They've definitely brought that up and just the way, like you said, the way they deal with it when they do fail or just like knowing that you're going to fail and you just got to keep moving forward. Because some people are like, oh, no, like I'm never going to fail. I I agree. I mean, I think a lot of people you listen to videos or podcasts or, or, or different, you know, seminars you go to, people say like, you know, when you're young, you know, don't be afraid to fail. But I think the reality is it's, it's whether you're, you're in your twenties or thirties, forties, fifties, sixties, you know, that's a life lesson. Um, and I think a lot of people handle it so differently. Um, so it, it definitely is a, a trait for success. And I think there's a lot of people out there just don't handle it well. Uh, mm-hmm. so I think it's something that, um, you know, failure does bring to success, you know, success. There's no question about it. And I think uh, you can read a lot of people uh, how they react after that, you know, that little stumble or that little fall, how they kind of react to it. So I think that's a really important factor. Yeah, 100%. So like you said, the business has been in business for 103 years. Can you share a moment or experience that inspired you to pursue your career to now be working at Liberty? Yeah, you know, it's, it's interesting. I, I say, you know, growing up in a family business, I think, you know, you, you don't know too much about it until mm-hmm. you're really in it. Um, so I think coming out of college, I, I went to Syracuse and um, had a, a great, you know, academic experience there and had a lot of opportunities to go to corporate. But, you know, I, I think being involved in a family business, you know, the thrill to kind of come into it you know, into an organization and kind of continue to grow the brand and grow the business. I think that was the moment, right? I mean, you're, you're coming out of college and, and, and making that decision whether to go corporate or whether to go into the family business. I just think it was something that hit me and said that, you know, I would like to continue the tradition, the succession, uh, third generation. Um, and my brother and myself have been leading the direction of Liberty for the last 30 plus years. Um, and we feel like we have definitely changed the brand's name and the, and the service, the services that we're offering. So it's, it's really exciting and it's exciting to, to make decisions on the next succession to the fourth generation, whether that is to happen, we're hoping it happens, but, um, mm-hmm. again, it's just exciting to be part of a, a company that's been around for that long of a time. Yeah, it's definitely really neat. You don't really hear about that that often. 
So can you share a valuable lesson that you've learned from over that time when that was like kind of coming out of college to decide to go to the family business and now just running it now? Yeah. I mean, you know, I think that I've been brought up to kind of realize that nothing comes easy. Um, and I think it's, you know, always about working harder uh, than the next person next to you. Um, I think that, you know, it sounds simple, but that's the reality. Mm-hmm. I, I think, you know, there's no question, uh, you know, growing up, uh, you know, I grew up in Springfield, New Jersey and had a great childhood and, and sports were a very big part of my day to day, you know, activities. And I think that, you know, going from grammar school and then competing even at a collegiate level, I think that philosophy of it, like really just working every day and and, and just kind of outworking the next person. I think those are just qualities that, you know, that helped me get where I am today because nothing really did come easy. I mean, going mm-hmm. into the business, it wasn't like, um, you know, the company was a, a, a fortune 100. I mean, mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a small business that needs to be properly run uh, with management and, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're lucky to have great Liberty staff and Liberty managers to, to help us uh, continue to grow the company what it is today. Yeah. I mean, just to be able to, to sustain that for that long is great. So do you have like a favorite, you have a favorite like quote, motto, kind of mantra that I guess like you use personally, or like you guys use within the group itself? Yeah, I'm a big, you know, I'm a big quote guy. You know, I like to send out, you know, emails to our commercial team and, and household teams uh, weekly. Um, I kind of like the one that says uh, people don't des- decide their future. They decide their habits and their <laughs> habits decide their future. You know, again, I think it's a, you know, I, I think people have heard that one before, but I think it's really something of importance. Um, you know, that we talk about our daily routine at Liberty from a, from a sales side, uh, that's my, my role is manager of sales. So I'm not going to talk about other departments, but from a sales side, it's, it's the daily, you know, game plan. It's the daily process of what everyone does and, and try to be consistent with it. So I think the habits of what we do personally and business wise, I mean, it affects a lot of things. So, um, again, I think it's important for that daily habit, uh, to be consistent. Yeah, that's a great one. I, I do like that a lot. I mean, it couldn't be, you know, more true. I think everyone can relate to it, right? I mean, per, per, you know, this is not just about business, but just personally. Yeah. I think everyone kind of understand that that good habits. Uh, you know, grandma, you should always say that to us, right? I mean, obviously, mm-hmm. it's uh, practice what you preach, but it's, uh, you know, it's a very simple quote, but I think it really hits uh, people from a business and, and personal level. Yeah, definitely. And then I feel like, that ties into like the 103 years thing too, because like you have to have good habits to be able to sustain it for that long. Like what's your kind of take on that? Agreed. I mean, you know, our company has, you know, from 1920, we, we've withstood a lot of different things that happened to our, our country, you know, I mean, you're mm-hmm. talking about, you know, depressions and wars, natural diseases, I hate to say it, disasters, we're talking about diseases, COVID, mm-hmm. there's, there's a lot of different things that, you know, our company had to uh, withstand. And, it, and again, it goes back to the good leadership of, of keeping, uh, you know, the staff under control, but also leading by, ha- you know, le- leading by, by habits. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. if you're not, um, you know, having your, your, your leadership understand how important it is to have good habits, your, your staff is going to follow your lead. So I, I think it's really been uh, a, a amazing uh, for, for our company to sustain itself for that many years. Yeah, 100%. So we got our first this or that question. Does hard work beat talent or does talent beat hard work? Uh, it's always hard, hard work for me. You know, I, I think that's that's a big thing <laughs> that sticks. You know, it, it really is. I, I think that, you know, people try to get away from that. Mm-hmm. But I think at the end of the day, I think it's really about you know, what you're willing to put in, right? I mean, you, you have to put that that hard work into it. Um, you know, it, my kids laugh at me, but I, I talk about that very often. Mm-hmm. You know, don't don't ever get outworked. You know, don't ever get outworked. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a mindset, right? Mm-hmm. It's a mindset. So hard work definitely pays off. Yeah. Honestly, I feel like every single person has said that. 
that hard work beats talent. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And just because you're not like seeing the results, you know, from one day or like one month doesn't mean that you're not making progress or it's not working. That's like, I feel like the thing that people don't realize. I agree, Sal, with that. You know, and it's funny in today's marketplace. I mean, you know, you always try to get the, the great talent because um, mm-hmm. that's really what that, that's about. I mean, you know, but I think that when you're finding the great talent, when you interview these people or even having your own organizations, there's there's a reason why they're they're good talent. I mean, they're they're just hard workers, too. I mean, so mm-hmm. there's 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 a definitely, a, you know, a ham and egg kind of philosophy that I mean, you know, hard work and, and, and good talent. I mean, you mix that together. There's there's that superstar status. That's mm-hmm. that's how a superstar is kind of born, you know? Yeah, 100 percent. So. What is the best way you think to overcome an obstacle or setback, whether that was like with you personally or like with in the business, like what you tell your staff if they do have a, you know, setback in the business? Yeah. I mean, you know, when I saw that question, I mean, again, you kind of look at it. I mean, I I think the best way to kind of overcome an obstacle is, you know, if you can prepare yourself for the obstacle, that'd be great. Right. I Mm -hmm. mean, that's that's the the, the easy answer um, to be prepared because we always say you have to be prepared. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, personally or business wise, you should be prepared of, of what that future kind of, uh, outcome is. But if you're not obviously prepared for the obstacle, you know, and it's unforeseen, I I just think you have to be ready to brush it off. It kind of goes back to that first question is that, you know, willingness Mm -hmm. to fail. I mean, you have to, you have to be able to kind of brush it off and continue the, the kind of daily grind, um, you know, uh, another quote, again, we say it, tough times don't last tough people do. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I, I just think it's, it's really a very simple approach. I think you just have mm-hmm. to be ready to brush it off and, and just kind of move forward. Move yeah, forward. Definitely. And like those cliche, like quotes or whatever you call them, like they're cliches for a reason though. Like they're true. Like they're just so they simple people, people are like, Oh no, that's, that's too easy. But like, no, that's, that's what it is. <laughs> It really is. You can't, you can't overthink it. Right. I, I keep, mm-hmm. I keep on saying to staff, I mean, keep it simple, stupid. I mean, you know, don't mm-hmm. overthink, don't overthink the process. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, sometimes you try to make it overcomplicated, but really it's, it's a simple process. The daily process is not, uh, you know, you shouldn't be able to have to go off the path too many times. You keep, try to keep it simple. Mm-hmm. Okay? The daily habit, right. Your daily habits. Yeah. hundred percent. So, what do you think is more important, passion or motivation? I mean, I know you touched on passion earlier, but between those two. Yeah, again, I, I think that passion, right? I mean, I think passion is more consistent. Mm-hmm. If you're passionate about something, you're going to be consistent with that every day, right? That That's my my thinkings of that. Um, when someone says they're motivated, well, again, I, I think that you're gonna, not going to be consistent with that, right? I, I think that just... You know, you, you might have that day that you have a setback and maybe you're not going to be motivated that day, but you're still passionate about mm-hmm. your personal life or your are you know, passionate about your business life. You might have that setback that doesn't get you motivated for two days in a row, three days in a row. So motivation, can, I think, can come and go. I think your passion on something stays there. Mm-hmm. The passion. You have to be passionate. It starts with the passion. Yeah, definitely. And then like with the motivation, people have said it before on here, but it is very true. Like you could just go anywhere, like watch them, like pump up video, listen to some music and just get like all hype. And then like, you're like I'm ready to do this, but then like that wears off. So wears it off, definitely, it definitely right? comes and goes, like you said. Yeah. I mean, there's reasons why, you know, corporations continue to send their staff out, right? You want to keep that motivation going, right? You want, want to go continue uptick, but mm-hmm. there's reasons why it, it, it falls down when people get out of that conference experience. You know, the people are yeah. not passionate. It, it goes, it dwindles. And then the, then the, the company brings you back out to another motivational uh, event and then it brings mm-hmm. you back up and it brings, you know, naturally it goes up and down. But I think again, the people that are passionate, I think that's the consistency that you're, you're trying to find in an employee or, or anyone just personally in life. You want to try to keep consistent with that. Yeah, definitely. So you're talking about your staff a lot. Like how do you like help them stay updated, continue to learn, within the staff, or if you want to talk about some things that you do to continue to learn and just kind of stay updated, whether that's just in the industry and in business or just in general. I, I just think, you know, the interaction, 
um, I think is important. I think we have a, a you know a good healthy office atmosphere. Um, you know we're we're open door company, right? Mm-hmm. So from, from from the owners all the way down uh, to ma- the management, it's an open door policy. So you know we try to keep it open, open feel. Uh, that, you know, it's not like you can't come in and have a conversation, but I just think open dialogue, you know, we have Mm -hmm. team meetings uh, every month with our different departments. So, you know, motivating people, obviously, uh, you know, striving for goals, keeping everyone, you know, in the game, right? I mean, you have Mm -hmm. to keep everyone focused on that, that goal and, 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 and give, you know, obviously awards to the people that are hitting their goals. So it's, it's that ongoing, you know, you want to say competition, you know, in the sales world, that's what my department is. That That's really what the motivational factor is, is, you know, mm-hmm. keeping everyone a task on that goal. Um, and, and again, I just think that, you know, keeping everyone, you know, we're, we're fortunate with our company. We have a, a parent company um, out of St. Louis, Missouri called Unigroup, Group. And, you know, we have all the the videos and, and learning conferences that keep everyone hyped up and keep everyone well-versed with what's the best and, and greatest things going on in our industry. So we're able to kind of go on webinars and, and YouTubes and, and see all that information. But I think that at a, you know, more of a personable level within our office, um, we try to keep it real. We try to keep it fun and exciting uh, for our staff. So we, we think that's a helpful um, you know, tool to kind of keep people going day to day. Yeah, definitely. And then you, you talked about like the awards, like how do you kind of like do that to keep people motivated? Like you feel like that is like a big key to it or what do you think? It is again, you know, it's the passionate people will, will, will obviously, you know, continue to do it without, you know, awards. Mm -hmm. But I think that in the sales arena, we try to keep it fun and exciting to give, you know, year end awards out you know, for the project of the year, it could be salesperson of the year. Um, you know, we give these awards out. And mm-hmm. um, again, it's just recognition for, you know, we call it the superstars, right? Yeah. The, the superstars, the cream rises to the top, right? So the, you know, we give awards to the superstars and, and we're fortunate at Liberty, we have a lot of them. So we've been fortunate, um, you know, to have some great people in our organization to kind of, you know, again, continue to lead us into uh, the future years of Liberty's. Uh, 103 years of being uh, in business. Yeah, that's great. And then I have to ask, because you've been talking about habits the whole time. A lot of people have brought this book up on the podcast. Have you read the Atomic Habits book or heard of it? I, I've heard of it, but I haven't read it yet. Oh, okay. Because a lot of people have brought it up. So I was just curious if you read it because you kind of, everything you're talking about is kind of what they, what people have said that have read it and then kind of what it says in the book. Well, Maybe I should be writing books, I guess. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> so as we come to a close here, um, what's one final piece of advice you would give our listeners to help them take another step towards success? And yeah, and I and I thought of this one to end it. it it's um, and I'm actually going to take it from Pochiano. Um, as you know, my my son, um, you know, is a teammate. For, for Rutgers University and, mm-hmm. and Chiano's a, a great head coach. And, you know, during the, the COVID time, um, it was very unique, obviously, for the whole country um, and for my son and, and for just even sports in general. Mm-hmm. And Coach Chiano had actually uh, teams calls with, with all the parents, which what, what I thought was amazing, um, you know, keeping the, the communication open. Um, on what the kids were going through, but the wow. word that he, the word he used, um, which again I, I used many times in our meetings after that at Liberty, the word was pivot, mm. and you know basically what he said was that we will continue to pivot every day, and the kids will learn that it's okay to pivot, mm-hmm. and that is kind of you know what is being thrown at the world at that time, but obviously Rutgers University at that time, they had to continue to pivot. You Mm -hmm. know, were they playing Penn State this week? Yes, they were playing Penn State on a Monday, but by Wednesday, they could be pivoting and not playing them. Um, So, you know, you have to be ready to pivot, I think, in personal life. You know, I think things are so fast nowadays. Uh, I try to tell my, my kids all the time, you know, pivoting is part of life. 
Mm-hmm. So just get, get used to it. Um, and in business, there's no question about it. Whatever you're doing, life will be pivoting. And if you're not ready to pivot, it, it, you, you will have some setbacks. So I think that's something, you know, as a business, you know, Liberty, 103 years, we are ready for pivoting in the future. Um, Cause we pivoted the last 30 years. My grandfather pivoted, you know, 1920, 103 years ago, he had to pivot. Mm-hmm. My father had, my father had to pivot when he took over the business. So um, I think my brother and myself will continue to pivot as we take on the next generation coming in being the fourth generation. So we're looking forward to that. Yeah. That's a really good quote. I do. I do like that a lot. That's awesome. All right. So thank you, John, very much for coming on today. I think that was very valuable. And if anybody wants to connect, feel free to reach out. And then John, what's the best way if somebody wants to reach out to you to connect? They, they can reach out to our, you know, 800 number at, at Liberty. It's 800-524-0567. Mm-hmm. I always take on cell phone, personal phone call. I'm a little old school. You can call me on my cell too. 908 413 uh, they can also reach us on social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram. Um, but again, we, we, I really appreciate you putting this together, Sal. And uh, it, was an, it was an exciting uh, interview. You got it. And then you're on LinkedIn too, right? Because I'll put that in the show notes as well. Like your, your personal yes, account. Yep, all right. Personal account is on LinkedIn. All right. Awesome. So that'll all be in the show notes. And thank you, John. I appreciate it. Thank you again, Sal.